I'm Kate Walsh and I'm Kylie McKenna and we're, we're off the court with Coach Mooney. Uh, can I quickly ask how tall you are? I'm 6'6". Six, six. Do you think Danny's going to get those jeans? <laughs> I don't know. His mother's 5'3", so I'm oh, not okay. sure. We're I'm pulling for him. But <laughs> <laughs> and he's but, uh, going down the basketball route just like you? Well, I don't know. I mean, he comes to practice all the time. The guys are great with him. He came to uh, all three of our NCAA tournament games, so he's been on flights with the guys and um, has had a, you know, we went, we played in the Bahamas this year. He came down to that game. So he's been exposed to a lot of basketball and, uh, you know, who, who knows when he's two years old, but I hope so. He's a lucky guy. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd love to hear more about your career as a basketball player. Wow, okay. <laughs> um, well, I played at Princeton, and uh, we were, I was part of some really good teams. We went to the NCAA tournament twice. Um, and, you know, Princeton basketball has a, a really good tradition, very similar to Richmond. I think they've been to maybe 25 NCAA tournaments. Right. And, the coach I played for in college is named Pete Carrill, and he is now in the Hall of Fame. So, wow. um, you know, it was, a, it was a very unique experience. A lot of the people who I played with are actually in coaching. Um, John Thompson's the coach of Georgetown. Uh, President Obama's brother-in-law, Craig Robinson, is the coach of uh, Oregon State. He played there. So, wow. <laughs> so there's a, it's not only a good basketball tradition, but there's a little bit of a coaching tree now also. And how'd you get into coaching exactly? You know, I always wanted to be a coach. That's really kind of the only thing I ever thought about being. Right. And um, I, my older brother played basketball and he was, you know, four and a half years older than I was. And I would go to all of his games and was really captivated by the coaches that he had and kind of um, you know, their presence on the sideline and the different things my brother would share with me when I was really small. And um, it's just something I always wanted to do. We're excited that you're here for another 10 years, right. so we <laughs> hear. You. Can you tell us more? That's so exciting. Well, it's great. You know, Mr. Miller, uh, who is our athletic director, and I have had a great relationship. You know, we, we were really, uh, we really struggled when we were first here. We had a difficult situation. I think our first year we only had seven scholarship players. At a, you can have 13. And he was really um, very supportive of our staff and our program right from the very beginning. Um, and he was great as far as as soon as this season was over he uh, we talked maybe twice and there was hardly any negotiating even it was pretty much uh, I really wanted to be here and he was really willing to make the commitment and a, a tenure you know coaching a drawback of coaching it's a very um, you know it's not the most secure job in the world because you know a lot of coaches get fired so often so to have a ten-year contract you know for me and my family is very secure our staff is very secure and just very unique in this industry. So we're, we're, we're thrilled to be here and you know love Richmond. Now talking about the players, uh, just the season in general, I mean, every sports season has its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. How do you think the mood went this season? Is there any like pivotal moments? I think so. You know, it's interesting that the season is so long. Uh, you know, this year, I guess we played 37 games. When I was in college, one year we made the tournament and played 27. So that's 10 more games in relatively the same amount of time. So there, there are many more games and therefore, you know, just many more opportunities if you're a good team to, to not play well and lose or a bad team to, you know, catch a break right. and win. And so we had a couple of games that I think we've, one, one thing coming into the season we felt was important was how we were gonna manage that disappointment, how we were gonna manage when we lost a game that we didn't feel like we should have. Um, or if we had a bad stretch of games, how we were going to manage that, because we knew for the most part we'd, you know, we'd win more games than we lost. And so um, I, I thought we did a pretty good job of that as coaches and as players. The guys were pretty resilient. Um, and there were a couple games, you know, we went up to Temple and lost a game in the middle of the season by 20. And, you know, there were some, we were a little bit, I, I don't think we were embarrassed because we, we played hard and all that, but we were certainly not happy with how we played coaches and players and we got back in the next day we actually went out and played football in the stadium as just a way to 
to just try to breathe a little bit and relax and not focus so much. You know, there's so much attention on college basketball, good and bad. And so you're constantly thinking, you know, does that loss mean we're not going to be in the tournament? You know, do we have to win all of our remaining games? And so there builds a little bit of pressure from the outside. And we just wanted to, from the inside, you know, deflate that a little bit and, and make it so that it was just, hey, we're we're just here, we're going to have fun, we're going to get back to work tomorrow and, and try to win the next game. But just to try not to let that tension kind of stay with us. Uh, and, you know, it worked out, so that that's nice. But, you know, really managing our losses we thought was going to be the most important part of the season. And as far as on the court and off the court, you talked about having a pickup football game after your loss to Temple. Are there any rituals personally or as a team that you do before the games right. that get you in the mood or get you ones in the zone. that we're allowed yeah. to hear about right. that they're not yeah. secret ones. Right. Well, it's funny. I, I bet if you were, if you spent time with probably any team, but especially our team, you know, each player probably has dozens of his own, and each coach probably has dozens. Um, and for me, it's actually when that's probably the best part of when the season ends is that I don't have to worry about these little. Um, idiosyncrasies right. and little um, uh, superstitions that I do almost every game day. It's just like relaxing to be able to walk in any door I want, for example. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you know, wear any kind of clothes that I want to wear and not ones that we've won or lost in. So, but yeah, there, there are tons of them and it, it, really, it really kind of dominates your brain, I think, especially on game day. Right. And we know that before the Kansas game, this is one of the things that stuck out in a lot of people's minds as far as before the game when you guys were all huddled up about mm -hmm. to run out to the field and the Kansas players came out to break it up. Can you tell us more about that? You know, it's interesting. I, 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 didn't, he I didn't even hear about it until after the game when, when somebody in the media asked because as the guys are going out to take the floor, there's about five minutes before the game and the coaches are not out there yet. We're just kind of in the back, right. you know, getting a last drink of water, whatever it is, before we kind of, you know, put our coats on and go out. So I didn't hear anything about it. And then, of course, we talked about it with our team afterwards and have seen some footage of it. But, I, you know, I think in all honesty, um, you know, it's a – I really think they should have two tunnels, you know, one for each team to run through. I think that was a little bit short-sighted. I'm not blaming – the NCAA for there being a little bit of a skirmish. Do you think it ruffled anyone's feathers before the game? Well, uh, it, it could have. You know, mm -hmm. I think those things happen. There's a lot of bravado and, and right. things like that. And, you know, I, I think we're pretty good about avoiding that stuff for the most part. And I wish it hadn't happened. And I, I don't know if it was more our fault or theirs, but I think it would have been better to have two tunnels this way. You kind of avoid that automatically. You're graduating a lot of seniors this year. How do you feel about uh, losing them and moving on to next year? Well, uh, we are graduating seniors. I think the most impressive thing this senior class did and the thing that I'm most proud of them, I think they've made an impact on Richmond basketball far beyond their own playing days. You know, I think they've, um, they've set a tone for kind of how, we, how uh, a Richmond basketball player behaves, how he goes about his business, how he attacks practice, um, you know, how he performs in the classroom. All of those things I think they've been they've really been able to do and you know as much as a coach or a teacher an adult says to, to someone you know this is how you're supposed to act this is how you're supposed to do it when you see your your peer do that um, yeah, especially someone who's been successful then you, you tend to really follow that and so I think they've really had an impact far beyond you know this season or the past four years uh, and I think our young players are really good you know they, they a lot of them didn't play as much as they would have if we didn't have such a strong senior class. But we think they're talented, we think they work very hard, and um, you know, it's going to be a little bit different because we had such good players and you, know, you, you might score differently or run a diff somewhat different offense or defend a little bit differently. But I think we can continue to have success. I think they just need experience and just need to be on the floor and um, you know, be more a part of the outcome of the game, you know what I mean? And, and be more a part of how that, the game's outcomes determine. And, and otherwise, we have high confidence in them and think they can do great. What are your thoughts about uh, the class of 
2015 coming in. 2015, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that is scary to Who say. are we looking for? <laughs> Who are the next big names coming in? Well, we, we really are excited about this class. We have four seniors graduate, well, we have five seniors graduating, one walked on, so we have four scholarships and are bringing in four freshmen. Uh, three of them won the state championship in their respective states. So oh. um, Trey Davis is a local player from Richmond. His father was on the first team to make the NCAA tournament in Richmond in 1984 graduated in 1986. He's a really good player, 6'5", kind of a small forward slash shooting guard. Um, we have a player from Atlanta, where we've done very well in recruiting, uh, named Alonzo Nelson Adota. His team won the state title, and he's about 6'8". He's kind of similar to Justin Harper, not to put pressure on him, but I think he has almost the same body type and same strengths and weaknesses coming in. Uh, and then there's a a guy, uh, a little guy, I want to say, he's about 5'10 from Tennessee, named uh, Kendall Anthony, who we think is a, could be a really, really good player. Very quick, very knowledgeable of the game. And then a 6'11 guy from New Jersey, named Luke Piotrowski from South Jersey, actually, like near Atlantic City, um, who also could be a very good player. So we're, we're really confident in these guys. You know, it's, it's difficult, as, as you all know, when you're a freshman, just adjusting to college life period, let alone, you know, contributing to a Division One team. So I think it'll take a little bit of time, but we're really confident that they're talented and that they're very committed to being good players and uh, and, and very excited about their, their careers. That's great. I mean, you've answered all my questions, yeah. really. This has been wonderful. Um, is there any Thing, any last things? Anything you'd like to you'd say like to the to fans say? before just, we close? <laughs> yeah, just that I hope that our students and fans felt as much a part of you know the, this exciting season as as we did because um, you know they were very much a part of our success and cheering us on. I, I think um, you know it means so much to the players when they're more most importantly when their own peers come out and cheer for them. You know when we have fans from the community uh, or alumni, that, that's great. But I think to the players, it means the most when their peers come out, cheer for them, and, and kind of show their support. So thank you very much to all of that. Well, we're definitely cheering for them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Coach Murray. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys.